Oh, should we buy Carnival Cruises or not? First off, we read this disclaimer carefully. Then, of course, do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. We now go to a theme that I call Holiday. Here is Carnival. They are in the cruise line business. The stock is actually 55% away from the low, but it is still minus 60% away from the highs. Here is Carnival Cruises website. Um, members get bigger savings. Join today, save today. So, um, yeah. Um, kind of odd, this white thing. I don't know what's happening here, really. It looks like there's some issues with the website. Now it loads. So this is what this is one of the problems. So a lot of when you make a website, you have something called lazy loading, in order to increase the speed of the website. But this is way too lazy. Too lazy. So yeah, that's an that's an issue. Okay, let's look at the chart. Here is the long term chart for Carnival Corporation. We have seen huge rallies. Yeah, huge sell-offs as well, and we are now back to levels that we saw back in 1993. For the overwhelming amount of time that this stock has been publicly traded, the stock has been substantially higher than it is now. Obviously, obviously there's no guarantee that we are going to go up here, but if we are, 666%. Six, six, six That's pretty good. So there is a meaningful upside uh, from these levels. Uh, the purple 20 week moving average, it has been a stubborn and uh, nice shorting level here, frankly, for the bears. But now the bulls have made a bit of a power move. They have flipped it to become a support level. On the daily data points, we do have the blue 100 day moving average, which uh, the bears have just shorted. Uh, no problem for quite some time. And then you see the bulls test, 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 test. If you are a short stock where this happens, you really need to tighten your stops because uh, this uh, is, a, is a clear sign that uh, the bulls are not panicking. You know, they are trying something and then we do get a pretty strong uh, breakout. Uh, so when you look at the candlestick like this, you could say, oh, it's a fake out, but that's not the dynamic here. So what happens here is that you have bears who try to break this, break the stock and have, you know, a sell off. But because there is a reversal the following day, you then have bears who have stops above the blue 100 day moving average. They have to really cover their stops because they don't want to lose. And that is what pushes the stock higher. Uh, after this recent pullback, we do see that, uh, yeah, it's uh, what was resistance has now become support. Um, RSI is, it still could go a bit higher uh, without, you know, problem for the bulls. On the daily data points, we did see rejection from overbought RSI, so this pullback didn't come as like a huge shock. Uh, we do see some bullish action here on accumulation distribution. MACD is rather elevated. 100 daily moving average support. So it is not the case that I was looking for securities at 100 moving average support. This literally happened by chance. Anyway. I will give the bulls a 5 here on the technicals. All in all, I like what they are doing. They still have a lot to prove, but, you know, Carnival should have some nice upside from these very low levels. Let's look at the seasonality. So to the right here, green, the last five years, blue, last seven, red, the last ten. We usually see some weakness, however, into early December. Then we see strength into late December, but then a big sell-off. Uh, to the left here, over the last five years, November and December are pretty decent uh, months. The last 10 years, uh, very nice seasonality. The last 20 years, uh, from January, frankly, all the way into December, 
Eraser Crescendo. So it gets more and more more bullish. So the seasonality here is pretty good, but 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 January is pretty bad. In this case, I will give the bulls a seven on seasonality, with but there's a big caveat: the January month is bad, but that's still some way off. So I think there's a good opportunity here. Here is sax.com and we go into the fundamentals. Number three hold F value, but A growth, A momentum, industry rank, top 50% leisure and recreation services, market cap 10.5 billion, no yield at all. But what are the insiders doing? They are, well, the last move is a buy and that is the only move we have, but that is, it's bullish. I mean, I would ideally like to see more activity. Maybe there's been a bit of a um, lockdown, on in, uh, especially on selling. So yeah, we have a, have a buy. Uh, consensus estimates. And when it comes to insider buying and selling, there are there are like written rules and also unwritten rules about what about what to do. So during, like, if you want to advance in a company, then obviously during bad times, it's it, looks very bad if you are one of the sellers that pops up on these lists then advancement opportunities will uh, be limited okay okay so here is the consensus estimates and we have 23 analysts covering the stock the average price target is 32 percent above us highest is 280 percent above us but there are actually some who think that uh, there is minus 37% that downside from these levels. Uh, a very key part of fundamental analysis is value. There is value here, but uh, it's a bit of a mixed signals on value, but there, there were some good signals on seasonality. So five to the bulls. Let's look at relative performance. We have 3% negative correlation with the S&P 500 long-term minus 16% with crude oil, and minus 46% with the dollar index. Daily data points, we have 76% positive with S&P 500, 94% with the DOA, uh, like trial, yeah, yeah, we, we will look at that ETF, uh, and 49% uh, positive with crude oil, and minus 78% here with the dollar index. So what happens with the DOA, ETF is going to have the biggest effect. And so it's the travel tech ETF. It's a bit of an odd name, uh, but yeah, travel. Um, so the chart here, it's been through a major downtrend. Uh, the purple 20 week moving average has been like the go-to level here for the bears. We short, we short, we short. And even if they shorted last, well, the, the week that just was, the bears made money, but when I see a chart like this with a very protracted downtrend, sure, it is shortable, but this is also one of those situations where it gets increasingly dangerous to be like a big bear. Here is the blue 100 daily moving average, which is the short level in this case. Let's look here at RSI. Yeah, we did pull back now from one of, from the approximate territory where we have seen prior pullbacks on weekly RSI on the daily data points. It's 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 a bit messy. Uh, back here during this rally, we did get uh, all the way up into the seventy-ish territory. So now I am comparing Carnival Cruises with the the um, travel tech ETF. There is the possibility that we are in the early stages of forming a major inverse head and shoulders pattern that is bullish that is bullish indeed um still early though we haven't really formed that right shoulder yet of course there's no like rule that we have to form it uh, let's look at the seasonality does it profess well yeah we of, of course we don't get any data here from away because we don't have Enough data. Uh, when it comes to relative performance, um, I don't like that away 
ETF is still in a major downtrend, but if the bears get into trouble, uh, that would be very good for the bulls. So I will give the bulls a one here on relative performance. We end up with 4.5 in favor of the bulls. The entry signal is 100 daily moving average support. We have some time left. I am going to go through the top holdings in the travel tech ETF. Away is the ticker. Uh, bookings, oops, bookings is the first one on the list. Isn't it bookings? Booking like that. Okay, booking, okay. Here is the chart. Um, yeah, this is a bit messy. We recently were rejected from the 200 week moving average. Let's look at the daily data points, rejection from the 200 daily moving average. Then again, we do have a bit of an inverse head and shoulders pattern that we are emerging from. Yeah, but this is a bit, this is a bit uh, messy. So let's continue. Let's go to TripAdvisor because the, the more cleaner the opportunity is, the better in my opinion. This is more clean. We do have a pretty solid uh, support level around here. For the vast majority of the time, we have been higher. That does not mean that a company can never fail. It's fully possible that TripAdvisor will be a company that fails. But if that isn't the case, and that is more of a dramatic case, then this is, could be a pretty decent opportunity for a bullish trade. So I do think that this looks interesting for TripAdvisor, but obviously the, the bears are still very much so in control. Uber is actually on this list, Uber Technologies. Mm, we have seen some rebound here. Um, well, let's go to the daily data points, I think, yeah. So the 200 day moving average is the key uh, level. So ever since, you know, this uh, top here back in uh, 2021, we have just been stuck below it. Peak above, peak above, peak above. And now we recently are trying at least to flip it to a support level. So I think Uber looks interesting from a bullish perspective. No, no like big problems on RSI or PPO on the weeklies. Not really on the dailies yet. Uh, accumulation di distribution is very weak, so we don't really have people building uh, uh, positions in, in Uber. Uh, next is WebJet. Where is that? Yeah, it's in Sydney, so most people just don't have the... Uh, they, they can't trade it, so let's look at Expedia. It's on the Nasdaq, more available for people. So here is Expedia, um, yeah. um, you could make a decent case that we are at some, a horizontal support level. Um, but there is a lot of conflict here between the bulls and the, the bears. You can see it on the wicks of the candlesticks. Uh, it, very much a battleground. Yeah, the blue 100 day moving average is definitively a level I want to see us um, close above. But if we were able to do that, then I would flip into more of a bullish stance on Expedia. Next is Airb and Airb and B, like that. Um, here again, it's uh, one of those uh, stocks that uh, is pretty close to uh, the lows. Uh, I, th I think this is interesting. This is not by any stretch of the imagination a screaming buy. Uh, yeah, but the share price is a bit on the elevated side, you know. This is not like a nice spec. Uh, so it's 98-ish dollars. I mean, for a smaller, for small position, it's not a big issue, but... Uh, yeah, let's look here at the dailies. Yeah, we don't have any like nice support level though. I don't think really on the RSI or PPO either. No, not on the weeklies, nor on the dailies. Yeah, it's. I do think there could be an opportunity here for Airbnb, but it's it's not really a screaming opportunity. So we have looked at Carnival Cruises. I do think it looks pretty interesting. Uh, there is a bullish opportunity here. 
uh, and also you know maybe because of uh, the the conflicts around uh, the world uh, maybe people want to be on a cruise it's it's a safe place to be on the open seas you know uh, that's also something to think about